What's going on, everybody? I am Robbie Ramnerain, CPA. I'm Devin Ramnerain, COO. Hey, guys. Hey, everybody. So today we're going to talk about foreign nationals, quote unquote, taking American jobs and what can be done about it. Uh, let me preface this by saying that I am an American. I was born in Connecticut, raised in the Northeast. I've obviously traveled to different places internationally for work, vacation, things like that. And all I can say about that is it made me love the US of A even more. I love this place. There is no freaking way I would live anywhere else. Right, and I'm from the Midwest, so that's about as American as you get. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. But without, with all that being said, we do want to address this phenomenon of foreign nationals and American jobs where, again, it's all over the media and we want to offer some hard and fast solutions where, I mean, again, they're actually not rocket science. It's just people don't really take the time to talk about it. So here we are and uh, let's dive right into it. The first one is with regard to schooling and you keep hearing about kids going and getting their BS degrees, going off to college for their BS degrees. Well, we're here to tell you we're not just talking about bachelors of science. No, in this case, we're not talking about that at all. We're talking about how you should do that. Um, but see, I'm still in school. Um, I had a delay in my education from some health problems earlier in my life, but kids my age and kids younger than me as well, you know, ideally, are you know going to school for these four-year degrees and they're taking out student loans the same student loans that they would be taking out anyway but then they're going to school for things like philosophy psychology art music archaeology basket what? weaving I don't forget basket weaving now. Th things like that <laughs> and you know I know what we're told you know you have a four-year degree or else you, you, you can't get a, a job you can't work you're, you're obsolete basically but I hate to tell you, if you're taking a degree program like that, unless you have an in already into that field, you're not going to make it the way you'd like to. No. Uh, you know, keep working on that as a hobby. Keep doing it. It's your passion. But go to school for something more serious, you know, like a hard science, a hard math. Um, there are several medical programs you can get into that you don't require a PhD to complete and you can still make a very lucrative career out of it. Um, finance is another one, definitely. Yeah, it's not even in my best interest to say this, but the accounting degree slash CPA track is one of the quickest ways to go from zero to 100 here in America. You could literally go from poor to upper middle class and possibly even rich in your lifetime. You know, why would you not do that? You know, but again, it's really just a matter of not focusing on spending your hard to come by student loan money on frivolous degrees. It's not going to work for you in the long run. No, how would that vote in a minority household? You'd probably get your ass kicked. <laughs> and that's the problem. So you want to get into our next topic? That's a perfect segue, actually, yeah. Um, no, so our topic number two is, uh, again, upbringing. Uh, growing up in an immigrant household type of environment on my end, I can attest to the fact that my non-immigrant friends and colleagues on my block in school and whatnot didn't have the same pressures that I did. Their parents, a lot of them, not all of them, but a lot of them didn't care. They were more concerned about their own social agendas, happy hour, cheating on their husband or wife, things like that. You saw it all growing up. And, you know, in my environment, it was more, you know, you get your homework done before you do anything else when you come home. You do not. In, un, in any circumstances, bring home a report card that's less than always. If you do that, again, I joked about getting your ass kicked. What's more likely to happen is you're going to get grounded or you're just going to get screamed at. It's going to be a very, very uncomfortable environment and you're almost pressured to just do better the next time. There's no bringing home a report card full of C's and your parents just saying, okay, go outside and play. Right. And with a lot of Caucasian households, that's what we're seeing these days. Kids my age and younger and even a little older aren't getting parented the same way. I want to preface this with saying my parents were great, but they didn't, you know, push me that hard. Mm -hmm. And you can still make it, you know, if, you, if your parents didn't push you that hard, you can still make it. Mm -hmm. You just have to push yourself in the place that, you know, you should have been pushed as a child. But just, just work at it. Just, just go do it. <laughs> right. Exactly. Don't feel sorry for yourself. Go do it. Yeah. And that's another thing, too. It's like without my mom constantly pushing me, I would not be here today with my wife giving this vlog to you guys. So 
you know, again, it's just about parents prioritizing their children and cracking the whip. I mean, that's really what it's all about. Um, there's no other way to describe it. And yeah. that's another segue into our third and final point for today, which is with regard to work ethic, more in the workplace as opposed to school. People talk about the, their nine to five job, nine to five vacation time. Are you, are you on something? Whatever you're drinking, pass some of it over because I could use some of it. No, seriously, you are not going to get ahead working nine to five, doing the bare minimum, showing up a little after nine, going for breakfast, coffee, talking about who's sleeping with who in the office, getting, you know, through your work day somehow and just like kind of skipping out at five to go to happy hour. That's not how you do it. You need to get there at eight. You need to be working harder than your coworkers. Don't engage in office gossip. Do the degrees that your employer, most employers, especially in Fortune 500 companies, pay for you to go to school. So if you have a master's already, get a second one. Let them pay for it. Do it online. Get ahead. Load up on another certification if you have to. You're building yourself. You're working on yourself. You're going to get ahead. And there's really not a whole lot else to say. Yeah, you know, and that's what a lot of, you know, minority people, when they do get into business, once they've made it that far, they're just going to go into the stratosphere. My Caucasian buddies over here, they're wondering why, you know, that manager position that they were desperately hoping they would get went to this minority guy. Well, that's because he was in the office at 730 when you were out getting drunk with your buddies. Yeah, I mean, again, we obviously are not against people having a good time every now and again no. but when it's built into your schedule happy hour every other day you're not going to get ahead you know life is not about trying to hook up with the office whoever yeah <laughs> yeah this is a family fighter video but yeah no it's not about that it's about doing what you need to do to get ahead because you got to remember too that once you get to a certain point in your life, you're not going to have that same energy to work, you know, to cash in on it when you're young so you can set yourself up for the future. Uh, for more, you can check out RobbieRamCPA.com or our Facebook page or LinkedIn. Um, our contact info is there as well in case you want to reach out and discuss this further. So for Devin Ramnerain, I am Robbie Ramnerain. So long and we will most definitely see you next week. Take care now. See you guys. Bye.